back, folks, to the WP Tonic Show. This is the Wednesday episode. It's show 253. We've got a great ga- guest here, great wizard. He's a bit of a naughty wizard, but there we go. But he's a, a great WordPress Harry Potter wizard, and that's John James Joby. You'd like to introduce yourself, John. Uh, hello, uh, JJJ, Triple J, J Trip. Uh, whatever, whatever anybody calls me, most people screw my name up. Uh, and so I've just been accustomed to being called whatever people want to call me. And I'm and a terrible wizard, uh, is yeah, I like our, like our pre-show. I'm, I am a Weasley for sure. Uh, when it comes to most. Yes, he's under detention in the Harry Potter training wizard school. <laughs> he's been told off by the headmaster. So there we are. Uh, um, off we go. And um, I'd like to introduce my great co-host that has to listen to this dribble on a regular basis. There you go, Kim. I'd like to introduce yourself. Absolutely. I'm Kim Shivler. I'm a business and technology instructor. And you're here speechless, is, you're speechless aren't you? I just try to keep Jonathan in line. In line. And I'm not doing very well at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> and I'm not under any medications this week at all. The, 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 John can be kept in line. I I'm not sure if I want to be kept in line. Right. Exactly. Uh, there we go. Uh, we're we're going to pull out the cat claw. Oh, oh God, she's got the cat claw, folks. <laughs> watch this on YouTube. She's got the cat claw. You got to watch it. So when, when this, Jonathan, so, so uh, John, when Jonathan is good, he gets the nice cat. Oh, look at that. Meow. Oh, it's no, that was the bad cat. That was the bad cat. It doesn't want, oh, there's the nice one. I like that we're a minute into the show and John already got the bad cat already. Yeah, oh, the, always, yeah. Yes. Okay, let's get started on the yeah, real stuff. Yeah, I want, to, I want to introduce myself, actually, Kim. Um, I am the founder of WP Tonic. We're a support maintenance company specializing only in WordPress with a leaning to helping people with learning management systems and getting them started on that great journey. Um, before we go into our great conversation with JJ, Um, We need to uh, mention our kind sponsor, and that's Kinster Hosting, a specialised WordPress-only hosting provider. Um, I host the WP Tonic website with them. Um, They're a great company, small enough to really care, but big enough to have all the bells and whistles that you're looking for, not only for your own site, but also for your clients' websites. Um, I've been totally happy with the service that provided WP Tonic. I wouldn't go to, I wouldn't allow um, WP Tonic to be hosted by somebody that I didn't think were totally up to the job. And Kins there is. So if that's interesting, go to the show notes. There'll be links to Kinster, um, their affiliate links, but you'll be helping the show as well if Kinster is of interest to you and just click the link and they will get you up and running or helping up and running with your clients. I really so like that, that the Kinsta folks, they pushed the envelope with HHVM back in the day. Like they published a lot of articles. They like tried to get a lot of people on board with like the faster version of PHP back in the day. Um, I've, like, I've been told, thank you for that actually, JJ, but I just really honestly, I've been totally <laughs> really happy with their service. They migrated the site. They helped me backward to get everything set up. It was the best non-painful experience I've had with a migration in a long while. And, um, the, the, you know, if you need to talk to somebody senior, they, they, you just email them and they come back to you. Um, so you can't ask for more than that, can you? So, um, JJ, so uh, where to start this conversation? So, you, uh, you, know, um, you know, obviously you're well known for WordPress Weekly. Um, and I think you've been doing a great job there. Oh, and also, you. You, you know, as the lead in Buddy Press and BB Press. Shall we start with these, like, uh, I don't know which one you want to start with, Buddy Press oh. or BB Press, because I know you've got a real passion for those. Um, let's start with, um, which one shall we start with, JJ? Oh, so, I mean, the... The, the thing with those two plugins, with BuddyPress and BBPress, is that they, uh, and the thing I like about them is that they are, like, 
they, they are the most user centered type of plugins that there really is within, within WordPress. WordPress is just about your content and those two plugins are about the users. They're about the community side of it. And so um, that's kind of what drew me into WordPress in the first place. And so those are the two pieces of software that I think are the most rewarding to give back to. And my, like when I learned PHP, it wasn't through WordPress. Uh, it was just through like trying to learn how to write stuff on the web in like the late nineties, early 2002, uh, gosh, when we would probably 2001 is when I really got into it. Uh, but that was when forums were a bigger deal than they kind of are today. So uh, that was kind of the way that my brain works and thinks. And so those are the two pieces of software that I uh, am, enjoy working on, I think, kind of the most. Um, but WordPress Weekly is relatively new for me. Uh, Jeff asked me to join early in the year. I've kind of been a friend of the show and been on the show a couple of times, but it wasn't until Jeff... Uh, needed needed a, a, a co-host where I was like, okay, I'll jump in and try and be helpful. And I think that's a, that's a good fit for me because Jeff is so good. Like he's such a natural on the mic and uh, in a podcast format that uh, all that I really do is just sit back and, and try and uh, be his Ed McMahon and laugh at his terrible jokes and, uh, and, and, you know, uh, provide a little bit of the core development side uh, or developery educational type of side and the occasional opinion. But, um, but yeah, I, that's the, uh, the long and short of it is that I always, there's a little bit more freedom in buddy press and BB press, uh, than there has traditionally been in working on WordPress core itself. There's a little bit more opportunity to, uh, level contributors up with buddy press and BB press than, uh, than there used to be, uh, in WordPress core, WordPress core developments changed a lot. So it's a lot better than I think it was five or 10 years ago. But, um, but they, they're, 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 I think they're more fun. We have, there's a little bit more freedom that we have to do things than, uh, mm. your average WordPress core contributor might have with, you know, tw the difference between 29% of the web, and less than 1% of the web means you're able to, to, to make some decisions that maybe you couldn't make with WordPress core itself these days. So. Yeah, yeah, a little bit on, a little bit more on the sidelines, <laughs> which has its benefits, doesn't it? You know, uh -huh. um, yes. So what, how's these two projects going? Are, you know, um, are there any kind of major updates, uh, improvements that you want to talk about? So there's a bunch. Um, and over the, probably the past I would say maybe two years or so now uh, <laughs> since we moved. Uh, there's a, a woman by the name of Jennifer Dodd who works at Automatic now who has been a BB Press contributor for a really long time. Uh, and so she uh, took on the enormous task and gave a talk at WordCamp US this year about migrating all of WordPress.org's forums over from the wow. old BB Press to the new BB Presses. So there was about 4 million posts uh, that needed to be moved and migrated and converted over. Wow. So, wow. Uh, and so BB press two needed to be tweaked a little bit and needed some maintenance and some performance uh, tweaks and some hooks and actions and places to make some of that happen. And so uh, BB press has taken more of my time because mm -hmm. it has been more of a need for wordpress.org itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, and, but, but consequently buddy press also has more contributors. And so, uh, oh, actually, I think what we should do is, can you just give a quick outline what the difference between yep. the two are? Cause I'm just presuming and people know, and I think right. that's a mistake. So BB press, the BB stands for bulletin board. It is, uh, it kind of the, the old school take on bulletin board systems or forums on the web. It is exactly what you would expect for forums to be and look like. There are forums, forums have threads, and then people reply to those threads. Uh, and so in typical WordPress fashion, uh, there it's kind of like posts and comments, but it's threads and replies and topics and replies. And so uh, it is a forum. It lets people sign up, create accounts, uh, and talk back and forth to one another uh, in uh, sort of a WordPress kind of way with the WordPress flair on it. Uh, and so that's BB press. That's really all it is. Um, buddy press is, uh, everything else that you would expect from, uh, a traditional sort of social type network. It is, 
uh, robust user profiles. It is uh, an activity log of the things that are happening all throughout your WordPress site. It's private messages between users. It lets users group themselves together and those groups can have their own forums because BuddyPress and BBPress can both be active at the same time and they work with one another really seamlessly. And so um, I've always uh, looked at them as like if you're building a community, you start off with a blog, you have some posts and you have some momentum. If people want a place to talk back and forth and comments isn't that place, then give them a forum. And now there's a place where they can talk back and forth with one another. And then once they, once your forum is huge and bustling and moving around, look at BuddyPress because now you can give a lot of control back to your users uh, for sort of a more like a Reddit kind of uh, thing where they can create their own groups. They can uh, subscribe to those groups. They can have activity streams and forums and talk back and forth. You really give control of your community over to your community with something like BuddyPress. So uh, they are, as much as they both have B's in their names and they're, they're easy to confuse with one another, they are, they're two different pieces of software that serve two different kinds of audiences. And then, uh, and they, because we use BBPress all over wordpress.org, it is the piece of software that honestly gets the most attention, but uh, BuddyPress as a piece of software goes is sort of technologically more impressive and honestly is like 10 years ahead of its time when it comes to how WordPress plugins solve problems today. Uh, and so, not to like keep going forever, but uh, BBPress uses all the, th all the things that people are used to using, custom post types, custom taxonomies, and all of the like WordPress built-in internals for doing everything. BuddyPress has always done the opposite. BuddyPress has custom database tables, custom APIs, custom code, hooks, everything to do everything inside of WordPress, but also outside of WordPress because it is sort of a separate section of a site. So um, a lot of uh, like plugins that are really popular right now, like WooCommerce or uh, even Gravity Forms has had custom database tables for a long time, but WooCommerce, EDD, uh, most of the stuff that EDD is working on are related to PIP and stuff. Um, all the membership type plugins, the Ninja Forms folks, a lot of these plugins all use custom database tables because they need to to scale their application in a way that it works for something like 4 million posts like you end up with on WordPress.org. So, uh, BuddyPress has always worked that way and a lot of plugins architecturally are moving towards that model because they're learning what we knew 10 years ago, which is on the scale of WordPress.org or WordPress.com or on really active WooCommerce sites that have thousands of sales a second, it's not just scaling an application to make WordPress's posts table work correctly. It's scaling a very sophisticated thing horizontally and spreading the pain around so that you don't crash the 30, 300, 3,000 servers that something is working on. So. Uh, BuddyPress is uh, ahead of its time uh, with those kind of things because it was architected to potentially have been a thing for WordPress.com. And we do use it on WordPress.org, but we don't really draw a lot of attention to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so BuddyPress and the contributors behind it, um, I have kind of largely been absent for probably the past year or two on the BuddyPress project because everyone else has been working on all of the cooler, more modern pieces of it. And I've been working more on scaling BBPress for uh, the international forums, the Rosetta forums, WordPress.org, BuddyPress and BBPress's forums and everything else. And so uh, it is uh, nice that we have those two alternatives. They do complement each other really well. Um, and they were like two of the first uh, official like sister projects to WordPress. Whereas like now we kind of consider WPCLI that and we have the concept of core plugins where Gutenberg is kind of one of those and Shortcake and we have all these other like initiatives going on. Uh, and so BuddyPress and BBPress are uh, symbolic in a way of like the early experimentation in the WordPress community of trying new things and seeing new software and testing the waters for which direction that WordPress and the community could go. I mean, there's a lot of history there. So 
uh, I'm lucky and happy and fortunate to have been involved in some small way in uh, helping the community out with those. Two. So, oh, so you're a happy wizard. I'm a ha- I'm a happy wizard. Whether or not people are happy with my wizardry is a different uh, thing. But I'm I'm a happy wizard. All right. Before we go on to uh, our break, actually, and then I let um, my great co-host take over. Um, I just because um, I want to um, to continue um, discussing these two great um, parts of WordPress, but I just want to quickly ask about you know you, um, you attended Word Word Camp US. Um, what were your general thoughts about how it went down and your conversations in general with people and their feelings about how WordPress is going in general? Uh. So it's a very broad question that I will try not to go on for 20 minutes about, but, uh, please don't because we haven't got 20. (laughs) (laughs) The people that I spent most of the time of my time talking to, uh, I went to two sessions throughout all of WordCamp US. I spent the rest of the time in the hallway, hanging out and having conversations like, like this. With, With the other wizards. With all of the other, with the 1800 or whatever, how other wizards that were there. I went to Jennifer Dodd's talk, which I mentioned earlier, and I went to the state of the word. Uh, otherwise, I accidentally did not make it to like any other talks at WordCamp US. Um, but depending on who you talk to, either people are super excited about what's happening and 29% of the web and all that is all good news. Uh, and then uh, sort of sort of polarizing, there are a group of people that are worried about the Gutenberging. Uh, of what the future of WordPress is going to be with blocks and all those things. And so um, I don't want to say that the future of WordPress is uh, uncertain because that's not the right word, but I think Mm -hmm. people, people feel uncertainty and I personally don't think that people should feel that way. All right. Any sense? Uh, Um, I just want to quickly ask you about that because I I think, I think you're spot on there, actually, in a way. Um, it was a fantastic observation. I, I, I think there's two parts of this, and we had a quick, um, I said the same thing on Friday, is that um, there's some criticisation, which I do think has some some level of legitimacy about it, about how the project um, was scoped out um, how it was initially the management of it mm. and the communication of what its real outcomes and significance was going to be. Mm-hmm. And there's been some considerable, and also about um, the data that you utilize mm-hmm. um, for a project of that size. There's also the um, the discussion that it... Um, it might be a, a very opt- opportune moment to really um, be more realistic about backward um, compatibility mm-hmm. and um, and also um, slight concerns that the real data construction and how um, mm-hmm. um, the new WikiWig interface is really going to really work with actual real data in a coherent, much better way. So I think they're some of the more legitimate worries. Would you agree with that? I do. I, but but where we, we care more than your average person does, I think is, is ultimately like the, the point that I, that I guess I'm trying to get to with people that are listening to this podcast for sure. The people that follow me on Twitter or whatever, is that like, if we do a good job, then no one knows or cares where the data is stored or how it gets in or out or, uh, or whether or not it scales or whatever. Like the, the difference is that because WordPress is open source and because we generally work publicly, that a lot of these conversations happen in public. Like they happen in Twitter or on a, a track ticket or on GitHub where like these types of problems and bigger are, they are solved every day. And so when Google or Apple 
changes the way that they store your iCloud data, it's a big deal internally within the walls of Apple, I'm sure, for the 30 people or the 300 people that maybe care. But if they do a good job, we never notice what happens back in, in, in whatever happens. And so if we do a good job means that, sure, web hosts will notice and will notice. And because it's public, a lot of stuff happens in a public way. But all of the architectural stuff is interesting, but it's not user facing or impactful in like any way that amounts to anything. And so, yes, it's important that we do a good job. Uh, it's important we think these things through, but we also can't log jam the whole operation uh, because we're worried about which direction we want to cut the boards. We got to just cut the boards, build the ship, sail on to the next problem. So uh, it, um, I, I see where you're going. I don't totally agree with you, Wizard, <laughs> but um, um, I think we need to go for our break and we'll discuss this in the um, post in the um, the bonus content section. Um, we're going to go for our uh, break, folks, and when we'll be back, my co-host is going to take over for a while with some more. We're interviewing a great member of the WordPress community, a great wizard of the community so uh, we'll be back in a moment folks we're coming back we've had a, a insightful discussion about spells potions all sorts of stuff <laughs> uh, back to uh, we're gonna let my co-host take over kim off you go thank you jonathan um i actually i have one question on the last point you wrapped up john and then i want to sure. move forward because you have very favorite plugins. So I'll try not to turn into a complete uh, fangirl here today. <laughs> uh, but I could, you know, I'm warning you. Uh, okay. So on the, the, I love what you were saying about the open source and that our conversations happen in public because I, uh, in the past, was part of an IBM team. And like you said, our software, I was in the software side, and things went on all the time that weren't, the, the public didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I get that piece. The one place I do think we're different with, around the Gutenberg discussions is it is something that affects those end users that aren't yep. always part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And those are my students. When I teach WordPress, I tend to teach beginners. Yep. And it's one of those things that for them to wake up one morning and go to their blog and see everything different, <laughs> that could be a nightmare. And so that's where I think some of this is coming around, not just the technical piece, but the making sure we're rolling this out for those bloggers and business users that aren't listening to the conversations we're taking. Right, right. No, you're absolutely right. And it's, uh, it's, Software is is kind of the newest place where this this is a real concern because before software, these decisions happened in an IBM kind of way. Like you didn't have a whole lot of influence over the engineering that went into the automobile that you bought or the infrastructure and what went into the asphalt that eventually ended up on the pavement in the roads where as now we really do have a responsibility to do a lot of uh, due diligence when it comes to what the end result of something like Gutenberg will end up being. And uh, Morton, who I'm going to talk to in a few hours, actually, uh, is in his WordCamp US talk, touched a little bit on a lot of this where uh, the, with user testing and knowing whether or not something is good or bad uh, is useful uh, and would be useful for something that is as critically important as literally the place where content goes in and out of WordPress. Like when you, when you reskin the entire thing, uh, it's people don't like when you move one link, let alone when you move all of the links. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it is going to be jarring. Uh, there will, it will be polarizing. Um, and, and it, it the, one of the things that Matt, which I'm happy that he did at the state of the word clarified and, and I'll, 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 uh, I'll give a little bit of a spoiler for what I'm going to talk about with Morton, uh, on WordPress weekly, but, uh, the state of the word and the live demo that happened 
was like the most important thing for people that were skeptical um, because Matt clarified that Gutenberg is for new users. It is for the next 12 years of users that are posting to the web and that it really isn't for the, the previous 13 years of WordPress users. Uh, and so him saying that, I think, helped provide the direction that people were looking for that like, oh, well, I guess that makes sense. If this is for what's coming and not for, it's really not for the people for the previous 12 years, then let's just accept that that's what this is. Uh, and so I think that offered a little bit of clarity, but it doesn't make it any less scary that that's what we're, is what we're moving towards. And we are kind of sunsetting what we have been trying to uh, work on this entire time. So you're right. Uh, and I don't know that, like, then this is where the uncertainty comes from. People, were, they, want a, they want a fork of WordPress that doesn't have Gutenberg, or they want a fork that does and let them eventually converge and come back later. And that is an alternative. That These big user-facing changes like Gutenberg are the thing that uh, bifurcates a community. Well, okay, here, now we've got a different trajectory because we really disagree with the direction that this thing is going. And that, that can be healthy for a project. Uh, mm -hmm. as long as everyone is on the level and everyone is sampling pieces from one another and working towards a similar goal. Um, I hope that that doesn't happen um, because it sort of divides resources and everything else. But yeah, you're right. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, um, I appreciate that because I think you have some insights or you've given us some insights that I haven't heard before. Uh, we've had Morton on the show quite often. He is one of our roundtable members. And he's fabulous. And you've given me some, some new things to think about. So thank you for that. Uh, okay. BB Press and Buddy Press. First, uh, my, I focus for my own stuff. I teach people to build learning management systems. So I'm combining learning management, membership sites, and BB Press is in every single one. So let me That's just awesome. tell you that. And That's I love it. It's wonderful. It's so easy to use. Mm-hmm. And so one of my questions was when we were talking about people knowing more about BB Press than Buddy Press, do you think part of that is that ease of use? Because Buddy Press is much more complex. When I, if I'm teaching a beginning WordPress user, I'm not saying put in Buddy Press mm -hmm. right now and configure it because it tends to be a little, uh, little heavier to configure and maintain. What mm -hmm. are your thoughts on that? I think you're, you're totally right. It, because for the people that are like yourselves that are deploying BB press to users, mm -hmm. uh, your level of comfortability with WordPress in general is high. And so when you know that BB press is made with the same ingredients that WordPress is made with, then mm -hmm. the recipe is very reliable. Uh, where BuddyPress comes with a whole bunch of different ingredients that you have never worked with before. And so, you know, everything that is delicious is butter, flour, and salt. And so when you introduce chocolate, it melts different. The temperature is different. It cooks different. So is it delicious? Sure. But do you know how to cook with it all the time? Not necessarily. And so you, people don't use Buddy Press in that way. They use it when they need chocolate. When they need that recipe, they'll use it for that. Where Buddy or, or BB Press is easier because it is more plain. It is simpler ingredients. So it's, uh, and uh, believe it or not, a lot of work went into making BB Press be as palatable as it is. We moved a lot of that technology into BuddyPress later, just because BuddyPress was so much more complex. Um, and the, the part that I'm thinking of is the part where if you want to, you can kind of just activate BB Press and not do any like styling tweaks, not do any CSS or JavaScript or custom templates, and it will look okay. It might not be beautiful, but you don't have to do a lot of work beyond clicking activate and making your forums for it to do what it's supposed to do. Where BuddyPress really does require a lot of additional consideration for how you set up and shape your community. 
And, uh, and so on BB press, we handle a lot of the implementation details and on buddy press, we really have handled none of the implementation details. And so I think that really is the, the, the difference and kind of the guiding principles between them mm -hmm. and like plugins like WooCommerce, which in its old heyday was a different piece of software called Jigo shop took a lot of inspiration back in 2010 from the BB press way of like, make the decisions like be an opinionated piece of software that automatically does all of the things that a shopping cart is supposed to do. Like people expect for forums to have a root of slash forums. So just always do that because that's what people expect. Don't make it too like uh, configurable or make them do all the work, just do the work for them. And so that's what WooCommerce does now. It makes pages. It makes the checkout page, shopping cart page. It does all these things. Uh, EDD does the same thing. Uh, and so that was kind of on purpose was BB Press, if in order for it to be popular at all, in order for forums to kind of make a comeback, they need to be super simple. Uh, and whereas I think because people are afraid of comments on blog posts because so there's a lot of contention about social media and the positive or negative effects that it has on uh, mankind and all these things that buddy press is kind of purposefully still, although to its detriment, uh, it requires a little bit of work, a little bit of implementation. And so uh, it makes me really happy to hear that you use BB press on, uh, on pretty much everything. Uh, but buddy press would be the thing that you eventually bolt on top of all of it. And mm -hmm. then you have uh, more configurable user profiles, or now you've got a place to plug the LMS in. So you've got grades and a very specific profile yeah. location. And so you can start to see an evolution there of how you might use the two together. But yeah, BB press is, uh, sort of, uh, simpler by design. Excellent. I have used BuddyPress on two sites, and I love it. Awesome. I do love it. It's just, it's Thank one, you. if you look at any of my uh, presentations on building learning management platforms, mm -hmm. I've done a few at, at WordCamps, BuddyPress is the one where it's, okay, it's that next step. It's the big boy if you want to do this. And, um, but I do work with it, and I love it. But like, like I said, BBPress is just, it's my go-to. And yeah. I am an old forum girl from the 90s, so... I don't do any custom CSS. I just let it go. And that's yep. what a forum to me is supposed to look like. Me too. And so I'm happy with it. I, I don't, yep. I don't yep. even worry about changing that. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt, Kim, but we're going to have to go for our um, wrap, the podcast wrap part of the show. But we're going to con hopefully continue the conversation, which you'll be able to see on the WP Tonic website with a full set of um, show notes and a full transcript of our discussion so far and hopefully we'll be um, going deeper into more potions spells and con other wizardry things um so um jj the wizard um how can people get hold of you uh twitter and github at jjj and you can see uh some pictures of my dogs and some musings on my blog at jjj.blog uh, or Instagram is mostly just pictures of the dogs. Um, that's probably it, I think, better better there than most places. And obviously they can listen to you on uh, WordPress Weekly. WordPress they? Weekly also, every week, uh, every Wednesday at uh, 2 p.m. Central, I think, is when we, we kick it off uh, on WordPress Weekly. Well, that's great. And Kim, how can people find more about your spells and um, potions? Uh, you can find everything I do at kimshivler.com or on Twitter at Kim Shivler. And if you want to learn more about what the headmaster of the um, Wizardry University is up to, you can go to the WP Tonic website. <laughs> and, uh, you can go to our Twitter feed as well, or my Twitter feed, which is at Jonathan Denwood. And also try and join our Facebook group. There's links on the website. I'm going to really try and do some effort on that and get that up, up and going. Maybe even JJ will join our group and contribute some wizard remarks. That would be really quite nice. So we'll see you um, this Friday. We're going to have the last show of 2017 
me and Kim are taking a little bit of a festive break after that. Ooh, but right. uh, um, but we've got some great interviews in 2007, 18, 18. all lined up. Mm-hmm. almost fell there, but I, I retrieved it, did I, Kim? <laughs> uh, um, so thank you for listening. And if, we, if you don't listen to the Friday show, which you should, it's going to be great. Um, we'll see you in the new year. And the last thing, if you're really generous in this festive season go to itunes and give us a review um it really helps the show and if it's amusing with a good wizard remark um i will uh, i will speak it out on the show as well so we'll see you hopefully on friday bye Right. Um, you want to go? You want to go fourth, Kim? I'm sorry yes. to interrupt. No, I, I know we have to stop the show at a time. I could, I would keep John here all day and just talk well, to him about this. Be, but if but we're I, still live on Facebook <laughs> and people are still watching, then we should keep going. I, okay. we, I'm comfortable <laughs> um, keeping going. So I really appreciated you kind of explaining some of the differences, both in the not just the software itself, but the philosophy with the two, because I think that helps me as mm-hmm. I work with other people in recommending what they do. Mm-hmm. One of my big battles with people, even though you say it very, very clearly on the website not to do it, um, I'm going to ask you to tell them why now. And that uh, is, do not use the scripted install of WordPress and then put BuddyPress on it. <laughs> <laughs> do it manually. And I have had this battle with Developers, I don't mean my do-it-yourselfers, I mean developers, when they're working with a client and they don't get why. And so please tell us why, because it's very important. So uh, with BBPress, you can pretty much do it like you would yeah. normally do with any other WordPress plugin. Uh, BuddyPress comes with a lot of additional like little flexibility bits that most most WordPress plugins don't come with. And most of the time when you try to do automated scripty type things, no one is really thinking about the buddy press side of how this is going to go. And so not to be too overly technical, but um, the real answer is that buddy press originally was a multi-site only plugin. And so you had to use WordPress multi-site. It would not work with WordPress single site at all. It was not even possible. And it was because every user always had a blog Mm -hmm. and that blog is where a lot of the activity would happen and come from. And so when we made the decision back in 2010, uh, 2009 to make Buddy Press work on single site. And this was about the same time where it was inevitable that WordPress multi site would get merged into WordPress single site. Then it was okay, Buddy Press has to work on all installs. We have to make sure that it is flexible enough to work on single sites or multi sites or multiple networks or all these different types of configurations. And so uh, Buddy Press can work on one single WordPress install. It can work on one single multi-site install. It can work with multiple WordPress networks if it had to. It can work with multiple WordPress installations that could be any type of single site, multi-site, multi-network. And it can work with the type of install where you've got global user database tables in one location and everything hovers around it, which is what WordPress.org is set up to be. And so uh, when when you try to autonomously guess what BuddyPress type of is set up and install it's going to be, uh, by default, BuddyPress assumes it's a multi-site install. Uh, if it's not multi-site, we can tell because we know that WordPress isn't set up as multi-site. But barring that, there's not a lot of other real ways that we know what the whole setup and configuration looks like. And so, uh, we do a lot of weird types of things. And a lot of people don't use it, but the last way and my favorite way is that you can set up BuddyPress to be multiple BuddyPress networks. And so you can have, with one set of user database tables, multiple BuddyPress installs, whereas on one domain, they have one profile with one set of groups and one set of activity streams. And on another 
install. They have a completely separate profile with the separate groups and activity streams over here, but it's the same user and password and email address all set up in the middle. And so really the reason you don't want to automate this is because nobody ever thinks to check all those little boxes and the default boxes that we check in BuddyPress core are largely based on multi-site. So it breaks stuff and it's a little gnarly. It's really powerful. It's super flexible. It's awesome. But at the same time, it just, uh, you know, it's tough to, to automate those kind of things. You could, but you'd have to spend all the extra time researching all the weird little buddy press places and nobody does. Uh, and so that's like the, the caution, cautionary tale that I have to like architects and plugin developers that are like, okay, well, our app doesn't scale and we need custom database tables to make it scale. My answer is yes, you do need your own performant, super great database tables. That's like the way that the rest of the world works. However, you, you immediately raise the bar uh, for educating developers on how to use your custom approach to things. Most people are comfortable writing get post mm -hmm. or getting posts because we all know how posts work and people know how to get categories and tags and people know how to get comments because the functions have been the same for 15 years. But when you don't know how to get private messages between two users and you don't know how to do it in one buddy press network and not this other network, you have to learn and people don't want to learn. And so, uh, because it's just, it's a, it's a whole other system, uh, that if, it, if, uh, if you don't really need it or if you think you can solve that solution in a different way, uh, then you will. And so uh, that's why BBPress is popular because it just uses get posts and it just uses WP query and it just uses categories and tags. It doesn't do anything special. So uh, there's a trade-off there uh, for us. And it's, is it convenient and easy or is it powerful but needs a little bit more work? It's like uh, cheap, fast uh, or reliable. You're supposed to pick two, right, is the whole thing. So you've got one that is reliable and uh, easy, and you've got one that is powerful, but a little bit harder to use. Right. And Hopefully that answers the question a little bit. It absolutely answers it, and thank you. It, I, BuddyPress for me, when I've worked with it, and as I said, I had two installations of it. I, I, I currently do not have them. I am done with those classes, but plan on doing another one with it. And that is what I always tell everyone. It's super powerful. You could do almost anything with it, but there really are just these technical, and that's why I wanted your explanation of why not mm -hmm. to use the auto scripts because people look at me like, well, it really can't be that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And it can be that big of a deal. And you don't want to get into a big installation and spend the time configuring it and then find mm -hmm. now it's not working because yep. of that. Yep. And it, it's a, uh... WordPress being a blogging platform, we, we talk about that like that was a problem or like we want to be a mature content management system or that WordPress should be a mature application framework. And those are, those things are, those, they're true statements. It is important that WordPress can do those things, but people knowing that what it is, uh, is the reason why it is 29% of the web. It, you, we know what to expect with it, but we also know that it's adaptable. And so BuddyPress, people don't really know what to expect with it. Right. And so people are a little reticent to try and invest the time in learning. And so, um, I mean, I've talked a little bit about this through the years, but I really think that we as like a BuddyPress community and the leadership behind it and everything should decide like BuddyPress is for um, LMSs or BuddyPress is for uh, alumni networks or BuddyPress is for these things and say, this is what it does now. And if you wanted to do something else, oh, sure, it can do all this other stuff, but this is the problem that it's solving. Uh, mm -hmm. And then let people navigate that. Uh, and I think that would help with things like adoption or introducing people to it or getting people on board with it and that kind of stuff. And, the for in the early days the most common use case that i saw for was like company intranets mm -hmm. like they didn't want to offload that to somebody else somebody with intimately within the company was choosing to own that 
And so they wanted an employee directory, they wanted teams, they wanted some sort of activity stream, and they wanted to be able to hook stuff into it to show what people were working on. And so in the early days, that was like, that would have been my choice was like, okay, well, this is what it does. Um, but now that it's 10 years later, I'm kind of happy we didn't pick that. And so if it's LMSs or if it's the educational space or whatever the more or most common uses are for it, we should probably just make a decision and, uh, and double down on it being for solving those problems instead of just being kind of mm -hmm. uh, ambiguous the way that it is. Yeah, it's interesting. So would you say, oh, sorry, Kim, go on. No, I was just going to thank him and turn it back to you, Jonathan. I know um, we're uh, spending time here. Yeah. Um, it's interesting you say, because you, you really see it in the education, because um, we're having Rachel Cherry on in the, awesome. in the new year of WP Campus. So both, both plugins, you feel that they have a substantial uh, use of base in the educational sector, do you? I, th I think so. So Boone Gerges, who's another one of the BuddyPress leads, has a... Um, I guess a suite of software that he has built called commons in a box. And so he, he uses it for academic commons. It happens to include BuddyPress with it, but it comes with a theme and a bunch of other weird little plugins and tweaks to handle all of the implementation details of setting up an academic commons space. And so uh, it's a really good, I mean, it's a lot of code, but it's a really good example of taking the foundation of BuddyPress and then being opinionated with it. Um, we talk, we've, there's been lots of discussion for years about like when you install WordPress, should it walk you through a wizard type thing that says, do you want a site or a blog or what kind of site do you want? Do you want an online store? What kind of stuff are you selling? Is it physical goods or digital goods? Okay. It's digital goods. So that means when you install WordPress, we should recommend easy digital downloads. Like there is a, there is a path there that we can help clarify for people um in wordpress core but how much should wordpress core influence mm -hmm. how people use wordpress and so it has been pretty successful not really influencing anyone in any direction and letting people kind of figure it out um so but the discussion still comes up a lot is what how how much pressure should we put on users to guide them towards what we think is the best solution I don't know. But that's an interesting um, comment you put there because the, um, it could be also linked to what in the end will be some of the fundamental differences. This is another area that uh, I wouldn't say has been causing um, upset, um, but people are commenting on it. Um, the different, What is going to be the real difference between WordPress.com and WordPress? press org and what are going to be um and what you've just said could be um a, a new mythology because maybe what you're discussing should be adapted on wordpress.com but not so mm -hmm. suitable for wordpress.org yep no I, you're you're probably right especially now that wordpress.com allows for custom plugins to be activated and uh it's a even WordPress.com or Keensta and other web hosts too, right? Like they have an opportunity within their own WordPress configuration and setup process for deploying sites to end users to say, well, we want to ease some of the WordPress pain. We've learned that all of our users most commonly pick this solution. And so let's guide them towards what is the most popular solution. I think web hosts that are savvy, and paying attention to the number of activations and the number of customers that are coming in are going to start to build a lot more of those type of concierge services around what kind of WordPress that their users are going to end up with. Um, Word Automatic and WordPress.com has been doing this for a long time with Jetpack. Like it's time for other people to wake up and smell the, smell the potion, I guess, if you will. And, uh, Liquid Web is doing that with dedicated WooCommerce hosting. Another, some other folks are trying to, to do that a little bit, but, um, but I think onboarding is better suited, to your point, John, to web hosts more than it is to WordPress core. So I agree. 
And then you got the whole, as you were saying that, you got, um, I'm not going to go into specifics, but you got the whole, um, with what you've just described, um, I do agree that some of that will happen. But um, there's a sweet spot, I think. Mm. I think you sometimes, um, there's been some Pacific um, hosting providers that have gone down the, um, the customised installation route Mm-hmm. a bit too far and some of the decisions are beneficial to them but not always have been beneficial to the end user if you understand what i mean so um i think it comes down to the philosophy of why it's been done is it does it really benefit the end user why and also you've got the question do you end up with a version of wordpress that's been so customized that it really um, no longer has any kind of strong linkage to uh, a vanilla WordPress. And there are people that will say that what the offerings are on WordPress.com right now are that. You get a totally different dashboard. You get a, a different set of plugins. You get all this stuff that doesn't come with WordPress at all. And so when you'd make the decision to move off of WordPress.com to your own self-hosted thing on a different hosting provider, you don't, you don't know that your images won't automatically resize. And you don't know that you don't have anti-spam. Uh, you have to activate a kismet. You don't know that you are missing all of these really free, amazing technologies that WordPress.com comes with. Uh, because they are baked in to the entire thing. Video press is a really good example of like, if you want to upload videos and content, WordPress.com and video press, sure, done, there you go. Once you go off of WordPress.com, you have to use YouTube or Vimeo or some other thing. If you're uploading your own videos and paying those bandwidth costs, mm-hmm. uh, then you're, you're just, you're kind of doing it wrong. So I think, I think you're right. But, but I do still think, there's opportunity there for people who really nail it. Uh, so I think you're right that there's a sweet spot. Yeah, that, that's the Aleho area, you know, is do you think in the next two to three, I was gonna, I'm probably asking you, um, well, oh, look into your, um, with your wizard skills and, <laughs> and bell ability, this probably won't be a, a challenge. Um, do you really think um, that WordPress.org might become um, – a orphan really that um really um, most of automatic uh, um attention is gonna be in um, wordpress.com and but i suppose that's a ridiculous question because that's really down to the community around wordpress.org really isn't it so fundamentally isn't it uh, so i don't think it's that ridiculous of a question because i think there's two sides to it i think Automatic has largely been involved with WordPress.org because of Matt for a really, really long time. And that, that is probably largely healthy for the rest of the world. They like to, everyone likes to see that there is a big name behind a thing. Uh, and so that helps people feel like they have, uh, if, if, if Time Magazine is deep into this thing, then I can be too. Or if Ferrari is backing some race somewhere, then it is more likely that other people are going to be into it because Ferrari is into it. So uh, it's good that a company the size and the spirit of Automatic has been as deeply involved in WordPress.org as it has been. Uh, And people are listening and learning a little bit now that it, Matt, as an individual, but also just as like a leader is willing to relinquish whatever responsibility people think he has on the project to someone who's willing to own it or step up uh, and, and be a part of it. And so like, I didn't start BB press Uh, Matt started BB press, but I maintain it, right? Like I'm the person who mows the airport lawn. I've just been mowing the lawn the longest. So I'm maintaining this this piece of software that everyone else gets to enjoy, and bit, so a bit more than Molly, you know. I think you'd be well, Molly. yeah, but it's uh, it, so it, you know, it. Do I influence it? Do I do I lead it or guide it? Sure, I mean, I I make a lot of decisions, but at the same time, if someone comes up after me or come on, if someone says, John, I've got all these ideas, I'm able to execute on them, and I think it should go in this direction, and if the community decides that that's the right thing to do 
then the only thing that I can do is say, thank you and good night, right? Like it's, I appreciate the time that I've had, but someone else is coming in to, to take over the reins. And so uh, the way that people kind of toss Matt around as like he's blocking things, it makes me hope that people don't think that like I'm in the way for the BBs either uh, because it, it could very well be the perception. And uh, the only way to not have that perception is to try and let people step in and, uh, and, and take over pieces of it, which we've done with Buddy Press, I think, pretty well. Uh, and BB Press a little bit less so, but I'm not really sure why, because BB Press has more, uh, we use it more within the community, uh, but Buddy Press, I just think, is like a cooler project. Like it's, I don't know. So I, I, could, see, I could see both sides of it. So I was going to ask him a question, which is on the LMS side of what you work on on like a day-to-day basis, is there, is there space or room for a hosted LMS flavor of WordPress that comes with BB press that comes with all the cool bells and whistles that you put on it. Do you think that there is a, a neat package that you just turn a key and you get a very specific LMS type of WordPress uh, install? I, I would say there's definitely a market there, an opportunity. And, and one way I would, kind of show that there is, is look at the success of the current hosted for you online learning management systems. Look at Thinkific. Look at Kajabi. They're they're very popular and and that's what people say. I just, Mm -hmm. you know, I signed up and I start building my course. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to hire a developer. I didn't have to, I don't have to maintain it, et cetera. And even with my customers, uh, my clients who make the decision right now, even my technology companies that are working with me as uh, helping them with instructional design, they're leaning to the hosted for them because they don't want to have another installation and implementation, et cetera. So I think that there's absolutely a market there for someone to combine the best of uh, BuddyPress, BBPress, an LMS, um, a membership piece because mm-hmm. it all goes together for a full uh, learning platform. All of those pieces are needed. So do you think that there would be, is it, is it hosted for them or is this something that they want internally or hosted on site or that they want a turnkey install someplace? Both? Neither? Which Probably way? both. Probably yeah. both where they could definitely for the, smaller companies a there's the host i sign up for it everything is there you know it's limited themes it's whatever they understand that they're had they're giving away some opportunity for control as far as they could you know there's only five themes you get to choose from and etc and tweaking this but really if you think of where wordpress is going with the customizer Mm-hmm. If of those five themes, you had ones that were integrated well, where you could pick your colors in the customizer, like mm-hmm. that's a hands down win right away. Right. And the power there, it, where I see that as being really cool is the power of none of the ones that are currently out there, they do one thing well, either they just run a class or et cetera. Mm-hmm. They don't have the combination of uh, a good forum. They either just have basic comments or discuss or one of those, Mm -hmm. right? So no really good forums, no social sharing, like what your, what body press gives you and being able to have your feed with things, you know, your grades coming into the Mm -hmm. feed. I was using buddy press with learn dash and then playing with buddy press and, and lifter because those Mm -hmm. are the two I focus on right now. And uh, you know, being able to get those things into your feed Mm -hmm. So there's a power there that if that was all done as a solution, you could immediately have a power that they, the others just don't have. Mm-hmm. They have a weakness there. Um, so yeah, I think there's a, a huge market if somebody's listening and wants to do it. <laughs> well, because I was, I was shocked to see how much it costs to host a discourse forum. Uh, like to go and make a forum mm-hmm. and have it, powered by discourse and hosted on their hosted service, I think it's like 
a hundred dollars a month. Uh, and it's like, okay, well that's a, it powers your community. You don't have to worry about it. It's turnkey and done. Uh, and so that's great, but it, it, it's free software and it's kind of the same that you're out of the box is what you're getting. And so, uh, I, it, it's, it really got me thinking a little bit more of like, well, maybe there really is a, a world out there that I have not been a part of in a very long time of, uh, uh, especially with LMSs, but in a, in a space where, uh, really a group or a school or a church or someone just doesn't want to do any of that work anymore. And they find value in outsourcing a hundred percent of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And so my, my recent, uh, I've, I've been a, a, an elected official in my village of 4,000 people. And so I'm learning a little bit more about how on the municipal side, uh, we really do uh, outsource a lot of these things to the groups that specialize in solving those problems in the best way, because uh, they, they are not interested in owning a lot of the software side of how they do their day-to-day -day stuff. We may have a municipal airport and municipal library and parking lots and all these things, uh, but they're not really interested in doing the web design or mm -mm. owning any of that stuff. They'll just pay anyone, whatever they can to solve that problem in a way that looks sort of municipally or gives them the documentation that they need and everything else. So, uh, Seeing Discourse's business model with on the on the hosted side of it starts having me think that so in the old days Automatic had a trademark on something called Talk Press, which was hosted <laughs> BB Press forums, mm. uh, and it never happened uh, unfortunately. And there we we kind of experimented with some BB Press stuff on WordPress.com VIP, um, and there were a couple of sites on WordPress.com. Uh, that had BB Press running on them, but it just was never a thing that took. It's uh, such a small niche sort of part of the market that uh, they're better suited to work on WordPress. They're not going to develop, mm -hmm. spend a lot of time on BB Press. But like, I really like BB Press, and I don't know if a hosted BB Press forum thing would be cool. But um, I think some of the uncertainty, if we go back to sort of the very beginning, it would be really helpful if there was more than WordPress.com. If there was a hosted LMS, yes, it happens to use WordPress, but it does all this other cool stuff too. Or if there's hosted BB Press, like another second big company, uh, two or three or four, however many. But like when there's only one, it, you're, you're, it's one single peg. You, a table needs four pegs to be stable. So uh, it would be nice if there was more than just WordPress.com. And if it's an LMS or something else, I'm not sure, but that's interesting. Well, it's well, there... just because it can only, there's only so, even for any company, there's only so much bandwidth, isn't it? So mm -hmm. they can only spend so much time on one specific sector where a more specialized company hopefully can. Kind of, sorry, Kim. It, what I was going to say is, yeah, that there are companies out there and the opportunities definitely there that are offering these type of things. Where I see, where I love WordPress and the building it myself is I can build in a lot more options. Mm -hmm. So for example, Thinkific, which I do love and I put clients in it, it's great for just a step-by-step -step automated course. Mm -hmm. right? However, the, the commenting is not really full forum like what we would like if you're like a, what I know you want and what I like. Mm -hmm. and, and then there's also not the, and one of the things I, I let people know if you're really gonna build out a great training company for your company or training program for your company or your clients. There's multiple places. There's the classroom and I liken it to a university. There's a classroom and that's where you go to your step-by-step -step classes. However, there's a membership piece where you have your resources that don't fit into that step-by-step. -step. I liken sure. it to the library at a university. Mm -hmm. A lot of these step-by-step, -step, that's all they offer. So there's no option for this other private resource area. Right. which is going to make a stronger class for you, a stronger learning platform. And then again, the, the, uh, the forum functionality, most of them don't have that. As far as the pricing, the ones that are out there, they are anywhere from $100. There is a cheaper version at Thinkific, but you're most people of my people end up in the $99 a month or more. Mm -hmm. 
Kajabi, 100 is their minimum. Most of my people end up in the 300 a month or more. Mm-hmm. And Kajabi has the opportunity of both the online class and the, um, and the membership piece. But those have all sacrificed some of the other pieces of an LMS, like Lifter and Learn Dash, give us more for questions, more for private areas. They've really built out the learning management piece. So if someone would take and say, yes, we're going to offer a configuration for you that you mm-hmm. turn the key and it's turned on and we make it easy to put the themes in, I think that there's an absolute golden opportunity for somebody. <laughs> there we go well i think we're gonna wrap up the show now folks uh we don't want to take any more time with the wizard's time um but thank you so much for coming on the show john it's been a pleasure yeah, you have to you. come on later Thanks on for having me. you have to come back on the show on the friday and maybe um maybe, maybe on time <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> he, had a, he couldn't get his um, wizard broom to um, shoot off. There was a kind of engine troubles, folks. But uh, I was an, I was on an old Nimbus, right? Like, uh, yeah. is that what they were? The, the yeah. But you have to come back um, for the interview show, maybe mid um, year in the new year, and we continue. Happy to. It's been a pleasure. So yes, we're going to wrap it up, you. folks, and hopefully we'll see you on Friday. Bye. <laughs>